May I now request the Right Honourable Patricia Janet Scotland to address the gathering. Yogi, respected Sadhguru, Shreya Your Excellencies. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today is a very special day, not only for India, but for the whole Commonwealth and the world. For what happens in India affects not just the Commonwealth, but the entire world. It is such a privilege and a pleasure to be amidst you as we celebrate this important day in the history of the world. And I really want to thank you for allowing me to be with you as you celebrate this 75th year. Whilst there is much to celebrate in India today, and I will come shortly, let me quickly acknowledge the debt that the Commonwealth owes to India and its freedom at midnight some 75 years ago. India's importance to the Commonwealth is obvious. India accounts for more than half of the Commonwealth's 2.5 billion people of the Commonwealth. What makes the Commonwealth so special is that each has equal rights and obligations. And beyond all practical advantages in trade, common law, and connectivity, we are bound above all, above all, by values. These values, similar to those of India's, for peace and democracy, of justice, inclusion, and sustainable development, are the foundation for thriving, prosperous, and vibrant societies. The culture of this great land of India goes back thousands of years, and India has been on a long journey. Your religion is often referred to as a tradition or a way of life that is continuous, with no beginning and no end. It has come to Sadapuru and this ashram to learn more about your traditions. And I have been touched by the peace, by the harmony, by the generosity, and I suppose most of all, by the love that is felt in this place. Every time I come to India, it is a learning experience, and this trip is no exception. Because we, as a community across the world, as humanity, now face a new challenge, a greater challenge, which is that of climate change. And here too, the Commonwealth and the world looks for India's leadership. And leadership is here. Save soil. So it is not surprising that the secretariats of the three Rio Convention and I, as Secretary General of the Commonwealth, embraced the initiative of Save Soil, embraced it as India 
and the world has embraced safe soil because we must save soil. So I want to thank all of you, but particularly thank Sadhguru for his energy, his vitality. For his 100 days, for his ability to ride that motorbike across deserts and lands and rains to take the flag of safe soil and our need to save our world across the whole of our world. And so I welcome what has been done, but I also end by saying thank you to him, thank you to all of you, but also happy Independence Day. Vanakam. Namaskaram. Namaste. Friends, on the occasion of the 75th glorious anniversary of our independence, let me extend it to all of our compatriots and all who are present here today my warmest greetings. Today is a very special day in the history of India and I want to thank Sri Sadhguruji for inviting me to join him at the Isha Foundation at the Hargar Tiranga campaign today. The 75 years of our journey from independence to the present day has been an arduous and a hard one. But we can all admit that the India we find ourselves in today is very different from that 75 years ago when we took our destiny into our own hands. I'm happy to tell you that this year, the 75th anniversary of our independence, India will be assuming the presidency of the most influential grouping in the world, the G20. Collectively, the G20 members account for 85% of the world's GDP, 75% of international trade, and two-thirds of the world's population. It is our unique opportunity, and this is the first time we will ever be president of the G20. This is the first time in the history of India that we will host an event of this magnitude. that we will be able to put our priorities and our narrative on the global agenda. We will be able to showcase our progress and our development, our rich cultural heritage and our cultural diversity. And the vision of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi is to host the 190 meetings of the G20 on a pan-India basis in every state and every union territory of India. It is our opportunity to show the world the great, I would say, the great spiritual traditions that we have, the traditions of yoga and meditation. And I would say that the world is more than happy to come and see this. When I was finishing my term in the United States, I hosted at a farewell reception and I had received a surprise visitor, none other than the August presence of Sadhguruji. And I can tell you that was the high point and the culmination of my ambassadorship in the United States. Thank you, Sadhguruji, for giving me that honor. And today, if our ancient traditions of spirituality, of yoga, and meditation are not only being contextualized and articulated in our own country, reintroducing our spirituality to our own countrymen, but to millions of people all over the world, we have Sadhguruji to thank for that. 
But more importantly, as the Secretary General pointed out, he has taken on the most significant challenges that face not only us as Indians, but humanity as a whole. Whether it is Kaveri calling, whether it is rally the rivers, or it is save the soil, the Sadhguruji at the helm of that campaign that is so important for the future of our fellow citizens, of our young people, and of the entire world. And for that, we all have a debt of gratitude to him. And we all also understand the need to work with him to help him accomplish what are all of our common objectives. May I now request Sadhguru to address the What a fantastic debate, a day to be in India, 75 years of independence. Well, India is a mixed bag in many ways, but uh, quickly transforming itself into not only a prosperous nation, but also bringing back the wisdom and strength, the cultural strength of this nation, which has endured us for thousands of years because this is a nation that always has been a beacon for anybody who looked for consciousness, for inner well-being, for understanding the deeper dimensions of our existence here on this planet. In this sense, India is the direction that the world will move in the next decade for sure, because right now, This is not today's thing, for thousands of years, whenever men were troubled in different parts of the known world of that time, they naturally moved towards India. It's always been so. It's once again important that we create that possibility because this is our USP, that is the inner well-being. So this is very important because today, as societies evolve into higher and higher levels of economic well-being, comfort, convenience, technologies, every kind of possible conveniences that people can imagine or could not have imagined are available today. But mental health pandemics are rising. Mental health issues are rising across the planet in such a way that it is no more an individual experience, it's become a societal experience. So in this context, India becomes a beacon to the world that because no culture has spent as much time and energy to explore the inner dimensions of the human mechanism. This is the greatest contribution that India can make. I am sure in the coming year, this narrative will be set for the rest of the world in many ways to the extent possible for us. Thank you very much for all of you and what a great day, what a momentous day, 75 years.